There are definitely some unspoken rules in Valorant that players are just expected to follow when they pick certain roles. If you don't know these rules, many of your teammates are going to get upset with your play, and it might end up costing your team the game. Luckily, you've always got your good friends here at Skillcap to help you out and keep you on top of the game. This isn't just for beginners though. Even some veteran players could learn quite a bit from this video, so make sure to stick around to the end so you don't end up missing some rules and looking like a fool. While following these rules, you'll get ahead of the competition and master the basics really quickly. You can really set yourself up for success in Valorant. This alone won't carry you all the way to Immortal though. If you want to learn the more advanced tactics and how pro players consistently are able to climb in low elo effortlessly, it's important that you check out all the good stuff over at Skillcapped. Many players think that aim is all it takes to climb in Valorant, but they're missing the big picture. It's not about the shots they land, it's about the fights they take. With our world-class courses, we'll make sure you're winning more gunfights and top-fragging more games. Since the whole site is backed by our rank improvement guarantee, you won't even be risking anything by giving it a shot. Don't improve in rank, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. Sounds like a great deal, right? We think so too. Be sure to check out Skillcap with the link down below and we will see you there. Starting out with a fan favorite role, Duelists. Many people probably think that Duelists have to top frag every single game, but honestly, kills don't really matter when it comes to Duelists. Sure, this role is in a much better position to get kills than any other role, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to top frag. The thing that is most important when playing Duelist though is that you are the one who's going in off of your enemy's utility and taking that space for your team. Since Duelists are the only agents in the game who have movement abilities capable of taking space aggressively, it's really important to have your Duelist player move out of the choke point as quickly as possible for your team so that you can all spread out and attack the site. Think about it this way, if you all just stay put in the choke point, you're going to get hit with smokes, mollies, and all other utility preventing you from getting out. This is why it's so important that you have a player who's capable of moving quickly and exploding out onto site to give your team the best chance of getting out of that choke point and winning the round. When you're playing as a duelist, your team isn't asking you to go in first so they can just bait you. They're asking you to go out first because they physically can't explode out onto the site the same way you can. This is by far the number one rule for duelists, and if you're not going to follow the other two, the least you could do is follow this one. Moving on to our second rule though, if you're really looking to climb as duelist, you need to learn to never overheat. What does it mean to overheat though? Overheating refers to the act of making a good play and then immediately throwing it away by being too aggressive and getting yourself killed. Overheats are incredibly common, especially in low ranked duelist players, and they can easily end up costing your team the game. We love being aggressive as much as the next person, but there's a time and place for risky plays, and when you've already landed an awesome kill, there's no reason to risk anything else. At high ranks, just getting 1-2 to two kills is easily enough to secure your team the round as long as you stay alive. It's important to remember, your life is oftentimes more important than any kills you could get from overextending, so be sure to think twice next time before you just run in and die. Patience is a very valuable thing to have in Valorant, and can easily be the difference between you winning a game 13-11 to 11 or you going to overtime and losing. Finally though, our last must-know rule for duelists is that they need to wait for their teammates to get close to them before entering onto site. Although it's the duelist job to take space, if they die before their team is able to follow up, all that space is wasted. It's incredibly important that when you're exploding out onto site, that your team is able to swing out with you and actually trade you out if you do end up dying. As we mentioned earlier, a duelist's life is incredibly important, and if they end up getting picked off, their team loses so much explosive power when performing an execute. Say for example your jet player goes one for one in middle and gets picked off. Even though she put your team in a 4v4, now your team has no entry to get out onto site. They could get stuck in a choke point, mollied, and even flashed when exiting the smoke, and there's not really anything they could reasonably do about it. Although duelists are some of the most aggressive players on the team, it's important that they are very careful not to get picked off early on, otherwise they will leave their team in an incredibly bad position and force them to adapt quite a bit to win the round. Let's start talking about a role that is likely even more important than duelists though, controller. Similar to duelists, we're starting out with a pretty basic rule that every controller knows just to get it out of the way. You've gotta have smokes down for your team before they go in. Even if you're just a second late, that can be enough time for one of your teammates to get picked off, which is easily the make or break in the round. Valorant is an incredibly punishing game, and just one second could be the difference between you winning or losing a round. That's why if your team is performing a rush especially, it's incredibly important that you're ready even before the round starts to drop smokes for your team. As for our second rule, it takes a bit more game knowledge to get right. Our second rule for controllers is that it's your job to deny the enemy team information on common sight lines through each map. You do this by smoking off these sight lines and causing the enemy team to have to wonder if your team is there or not. 
On a map like Ascent, this means smoking catwalk. On Icebox, you smoke mid. On Breeze, you can smoke halls. All three of these smokes make it very difficult for the enemies to get information on the other side and determine if your team is scaling up or not. A good controller will be utilizing these smokes throughout nearly every single round and making it nearly impossible for the enemy team to get a good read on what their team is planning for the round. Especially on maps with long sight lines, that can be used to cut off rotations such as Icebox. Stuff like this might not feel like the most exciting use, but trust us when we say they are incredibly impactful and can help your team immensely. Finally, our last rule for controller is that once your smokes are down, you're just another body for your team. Obviously, this rule has its exceptions. Say, for example, you're playing Brimstone and want to set up for your post-plant Molly ult combo. Clearly, you'd still have a lot to live for in this situation. However, for most controllers, or really any agent, if you've used all your utility, the best thing you can do is lead the way for your team and get traded out by someone who still has utility left. Say, for example, you're playing Astra and you have three stars. You use two to smoke and one to gravity well back to sight. After all of your stars are used, you might as well just be a training bot. Be that fearless leader you need for your team and make sure you get the most out of your life by putting your team in the best possible position to win the round. Moving on to our next role, we're talking about the big scary initiators now. Playing initiator at the top level has a lot to do with timing. Most initiators will just throw out their utility whenever, but this is a good way to not get any value out of your abilities. Instead, follow our first rule, which is that your utility should be used before anyone on your team starts to entry into sight. Say, for example, example, you're playing Sova and you shoot your recon too early. The enemy team is just going to shoot it and then turn their attention towards your team. Now say you shoot it too late and members of your team have already died before it starts to ping anyone. This is why it's so important to use it right as your team is beginning to pressure the enemy team because now they have to choose between either shooting the dart or shooting your teammates, giving your team an upper hand in the fight. This same thing applies for all initiators. Sky should be using her wolf, Fade should be using her eye, KO should be using his flashes. You guys get the idea. Initiators are some of the heftiest support agents in the game, so it's incredibly important that you're doing your best to set up your teammates. This brings us to our second rule though, which also has to do with the refreshing utility initiators have. As an initiator, it's important to call out when your signature ability is coming back up to try and get your team unified under a specific timing. It seems like such a small thing, but by calling out when your recon, knife, or fault line come up, you can get your teammates to wait for that utility before doing anything drastic. A simple, I'll have recon for retake in 8 can be enough to get your teammates to hold off and all push in together, but if you don't call it out, most of the time your teammates will not wait for it. Remember, it's your job to keep your whole team on the same page. Finally, our third rule is that buying utility is almost always better than buying full armor and a rifle. There are obviously some situations which this is an exception, but as initiators, your utility is so incredibly valuable, so it's really important you're prioritizing it over armor or even weapons at times. I can't tell you how many times I've seen my Sova not buy his drone only to lose two to three teammates to a judge sitting in a corner. Since initiators will oftentimes be in the back line anyway using utility, there's really no reason for them to have that extra firepower or armor in the first place. They're much better off buying those utilities that can be so important and supporting their teammates from afar. Moving over towards our final role though, the one many of you have been waiting for, Sentinels. The first rule for Sentinels is simple, play off of your utility. All Sentinels have some form of utility that is used to hold map control and make it more difficult for the enemy team to push up on them. Their utility however isn't great for pushing forward, which is why Sentinels should very rarely be the ones aggressing on the team. The Sentinels job is to hold space for their team so that the other teammates can get aggressive in other places. But you can't do that if you push in front of your utility and die. So please oh please follow our first rule and play off of your utility. You'll thank us later. Because of this first rule, it should make our second rule a bit easier, which is the Sentinels should be staring at their map for a large portion of the round due to their role in the team. Since Sentinels will mostly be acting off of their utility, a lot of their time is going to be spent by looking up at the map and just seeing what is going on. While looking at the map, you can call out enemy positions and even try to manage your rotations based off of this info. Duelist players are oftentimes going to be a bit more focused on their mechanics and taking space for their team. So since you'll oftentimes be in the back line or even lurking, you're in the perfect position to be more of a mastermind for your team. Every role should be aware of what is going on in the game, but Sentinels are by far some of the best positioned players to do so which is why many teams have their IGL as the Sentinel role on the team. Finally, our last rule for Sentinels, unless you have a good reason to be stacking all of your utility on one site, spread your util out. So many players will just stack all of their utility in one area and then complain when their enemy team goes elsewhere. By spreading out your utility as a Sentinel, you're able to cover more area and provide your team infinitely more value than you would be if you just stacked all of your abilities in one place. Sure, if they come to your site, it might be great to load up there, but the moment they go somewhere else, you've gone from getting massive value 
to almost no value. Mix things up, keep your enemies on their toes, but most important, make sure you're at least getting some value out of your abilities. Finally, it's important to remember the most important rule of Valorant, which is that the number one best way to improve is to check out our world-class courses over at SkillCap. We recruited some of the best coaches in the game, specifically because we want to give you every trick you could possibly need to improve with the game. Many players believe the game is all luck, but that's why we've recorded ourselves countless times diving straight into ELO Hell and proving that any player can climb out of these ranks by just implementing the fundamental tactics that we will teach you over at SkillCap. Since all of this, as we mentioned before, is backed by a rank improvement guarantee, it is by far the best way to improve at Valorant on the market right now. So what are you waiting for? Click that link in the description and we will see you there.